As a weatherman, we'll occasionally have people call into the station and report different kinds of weather that are happening on the ground so that it gives us something to talk about in the weather forecast based on observations. And it was interesting because yesterday somebody called in saying that they had reports of sleet at their house. And I had a general idea of what sleet is and I've literally learned it in five or six classes. And I've read it in probably 10 different books but there's something about learning where if you haven't done something recently or you haven't looked at an issue or an idea recently, it's amazing how quickly it escapes from your mind. So I was thinking, I don't exactly know what the difference between sleet is and hail or anything like that. So it just got me thinking, all right, it's probably about time to review the different types of precipitation. So that's what we're going to be doing today, looking at the difference between rain, snow, hail, sleet, and then anything else out there. So we'll just go on over to Meteorology Insider, look at what are the different types of precipitation, and then how do they form? Because that's the big thing that leads to different forms of precipitation is usually the development of whichever form we're talking about. So what are the different types? Have you ever looked up at the sky and wondered what type of precipitation you were about to experience? or got a phone call and kind of forgot something that you learned about five to six years ago. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, and freezing rain are all types of precipitation that we may encounter throughout the year. But do you know how they form and what makes each one unique? In this article, we will explore the science behind precipitation and answer these questions. So let's just go right into it. We'll start with an easy one, one that probably everybody understands, but you may not actually know how it forms. We'll go rain. So rain is perhaps the most common type of precipitation. It forms when warm, moist air rises and cools, causing water vapor to condense into water droplets. These droplets combine to form clouds, and when the clouds become heavy enough, the water droplets fall to the ground as rain. The temperature at the ground level determines whether the rain will be warm or cold. So this actually ties into the video I did yesterday where we were talking about cold fronts and warm fronts. And remember along a cold front, it comes in and it has a pretty steep boundary. And on that boundary of the cold air moving in, warm air is pushed up. And as it rises, it cools down. As it cools down, it's not able to hold as much moisture. So it's almost like you're squeezing a sponge and the water vapor turns into little droplets. And then those droplets, let's say you have two like this, in the cloud, they'll knock together, make a bigger one, and then they just keep doing that until they get heavy enough to fall as a rain droplet. So moving on, this is the one that I'm most interested in reading, sleet. Sleet, also known as ice pellets, is a type of winter precipitation. It forms when snow falls through a layer of warm air, which melts the snowflakes into rain. As the rain falls through a layer of cold air near the ground, it refreezes into tiny ice pellets before hitting the surface. So that's very interesting because yesterday in Santa Cruz, I actually saw something very similar. I thought it was hail at first, but there's a good chance that it was actually sleet I was looking at. So the difference there is with sleet, what's it say it starts as? It starts as snow, falls through a warm layer, it melts, and then it's like a little rain droplet. But then before it gets to the ground, it hits a cooler layer, it refreezes, and then it's like a little ice pellet. So I, I imagine it would be pretty hard to tell the difference between sleet and hail if you were just looking at two of them, like in the palm of your hand. I would imagine hail would t typically be bigger though. And we'll find out when we look at the formation of hail. So now moving on to snow. This is something that we're actually seeing in the Bay Area and the Central Coast at the moment I'm filming this video. We, we could see several inches of snow in the Santa Cruz Mountains overnight tonight, which is not something you often see. So snow is another type of winter precipitation that forms in clouds when temperatures are below freezing. Water vapor condenses into ice crystals, which grow larger and form snowflakes. These snowflakes fall to the ground when they become heavy enough and the temperature remains below freezing. So the key part there is the temperature remains below freezing. That's what allows the snowflake to remain intact, intact and not melt on its way down and turn into sleet. But I'm sure everybody here has seen high resolution imagery of snowflakes, but if you haven't, that is 
stop this video right now. Who cares what I have to say? And look up some images of snowflakes on the internet. And it is amazing the formation and the structure that they have. And it, I believe it's like fingerprints where no two snowflakes are the same, but they are just beautiful. I don't know any other way to put that. So now getting on to hail and maybe hopefully we'll be able to figure out maybe the difference between hail and sleet right here. So hail is a type of precipitation that occurs during thunderstorms. It forms when strong updrafts of warm air carry raindrops up into the atmosphere where they freeze into ice. The frozen raindrops fall back down to the ground, but as they fall, they are carried back up by another updraft of warm air. This cycle repeats until the hailstones are too heavy to be carried back up and they fall to the ground. So that's why with a very big thunderstorm, you can get very big hailstones because the stronger the updrafts are, the heavier of a hailstone it's going to be able to keep suspended in the air. So if you didn't get what I was just reading, imagine it's a thunderstorm cloud like this. You get a little raindrop forming down here. It rises up as it goes higher into the cloud. It's colder up there, so it freezes, gets a little bit heavier, comes down, and then maybe another updraft comes in. It pushes it back up, and as it's doing that, it's having more droplets attached to it, and then it's freezing, and then more droplets attached to it, it's freezing, and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it gets so heavy that it falls out of that cloud and we get a hailstone on the ground. And then finally, we'll look at freezing rain right here. That one's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll read it anyway, see if there are some surprises. Freezing rain is a type of winter precipitation that forms when rain falls through a layer of cold air near the ground where temperatures are below freezing. The raindrops freeze on contact with surfaces that are at or below freezing temperatures, creating a glaze of ice. Freezing rain can be extremely hazardous as it can create slippery road conditions and cause power outages. So slippery road conditions, that's probably the biggest concern when it comes to freezing rain. But the first thing that came to my, my mind was some of the images that I've seen of power lines where freezing rain hits onto the power line and then it instantly freezes. And then that just keeps happening and the power lines become so heavy that they'll drag all the way to the ground or just completely break. And that's why you can get a lot of power outages. And this can be a huge problem because it happens when you have very cold conditions. So then if you end up with a bunch of power outages, you end up with no heating and then that can be potentially dangerous out there. And there have been some big events in throughout history where freezing rain has led to power outages and it's just been devastating for the communities there. So final conclusion. In conclusion, understanding the different types of precipitation and how they form can help us prepare for weather conditions and stay safe. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, and freezing rain each have unique characteristics and require specific weather conditions to form. By understanding these factors, we can better predict and prepare for different types of precipitation. All right, so now let's see if I am able to provide a summary of the different factors that we looked at. So rain, that one's pretty simple. You have like a little dust particle and then water attaches onto it. But even before that, it's usually from warm, moist air rising up. As it rises, it cools. As it cools, it condenses, forms clouds. Those little droplets attach, each, attach to each other. When they become heavy enough, they fall as rain. The next one was sleet. That is where snow or a snow crystal falls, goes through a warm layer, it melts, and then before it reaches the ground, it reaches, it goes through another cold layer where temperatures are below freezing, and then it refreezes and becomes like a little ice pellet, and that's what you call sleet. The next one was hail. You often see that with thunderstorms where updrafts are able to take a raindrop, lift it up into the cloud, it freezes, and then that can just continue happening over and over again. And every time it goes back down, it has a few more droplets attached to it. Once it goes back up, it refreezes a little bit bigger and then just keeps doing that until it's so heavy that it falls out and you see hail. And then finally, freezing rain, that's where water droplet or raindrop is falling. It goes through below freezing temperatures. So then right when it hits some below freezing surface, it instantly freezes. And that one can lead to some bad impacts, as a lot of these can if there's enough of it, uh, including power outages or slippery road conditions. So I think we all learned a little something today about the different types of 
precipitation. I'll be back tomorrow with diving into more aspects of weather or any questions that might come up. Thanks for watching.